This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Another frigid start, 12 degrees in Indianapolis this morning. I'll let you know if we're done with the core of the cold or if more is on the way. It's, it's disturbing. I mean, I've lived here my entire life, and this area has always been very safe, so it's a shame. An organized theft gang targeting people in Hamilton County working for you will show you what's happening to some and how you can protect yourself. More deadly gun violence. A double shooting leaves a man dead and another person hurt. Tonight, we dig deeper with more perspective behind this violence in Indianapolis. Pets being left out in the cold and the shelter at Indianapolis Animal Care Services is filling up. How your warm heart can warm the lives of these pets. But first, here at 6 o'clock, the warm-up is here. Temperatures reaching the 40-degree mark in central Indiana, and we have stayed dry. Thanks for joining us here at 6 o'clock. I'm Nicole Griffin in the tracking center here with meteorologist Kyle Mounts. Kyle, we are celebrating small winds here, a little warmer here on our Saturday. Yeah, we are going to continue to climb out of this deep freeze, and it was frigid out there this morning once again. We saw some areas getting down into the single digits close to zero in Lafayette at three this morning, four in Peru. So really a very nice recovery. We made it all the way to 43 in Indianapolis, still sitting at the 40 degree mark right now downtown. 39 for you in Muncie and 41 in the Columbus area area and as we look out there we still have the clouds around but Pretty much all of us are going to be staying dry. That breeze is driving down the wind chill, though. Feels like 32. I say most of us dry. We had a little complex of a few sprinkles out there, but even that is fading away. Very weak system kind of spiraling on through here. But we'll really just have those cloudy skies. And temperatures holding steady will be in the middle 30s right on through 11 o'clock. If you are going to be heading out to the boat sport and travel show tomorrow, we'll have some clouds. Temperatures climbing through the 30s and into the 40s. We'll look at the rest of your Sunday in just a few minutes. All right, Kyle, thank you. An organized theft gang operating in areas across the nation has recently targeted Fisher's residents. Tonight, police are urging people in Hamilton County to be extra cautious. RTV6's Amanda Starantino is working for you with a warning from police and ways you can protect yourself and your family. Many women carry a purse like this one and leave it wide open, but police are asking women to be extra vigilant right now because a quick lunch in Fishers, like at this Panera here, can put you out thousands of dollars if you're not careful. Police believe a well-organized gang of thieves is committing crimes across the country, including here in central Indiana, specifically targeting areas like this, lunch restaurants and grocery markets, stores located near big box retailers. Now, Fishers police issued a warning this week saying the gang stole a woman's wallet earlier this month at the Panera on 96th Street near I-69. Immediately after that, the woman's credit cards were used to buy $5,000 in gift cards at the Super Target on 116th Street. According to Sergeant Tom Wager, this incident is not the first time. This is just something that can happen so quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can just be eating lunch and all of a sudden, uh, you know, somebody is using your credit card. Yeah. And, and these individuals i mean they are professional thieves they they train and they practice this skill if you will and they can have your credit card in in seconds and you not even know it now this is what we know they operate in groups of two or three they are usually well dressed and drive rental cars to blend into upscale communities and they usually steal from women's purses police tell me the biggest mistake you can make is by not calling them as soon as you notice something is wrong they say this game moves quickly, so the sooner the police can act, the better. Working for you in Fishers, Amanda Starantino, RTV6. Amanda, thank you. The Fishers Police Department is also working with IMPD, Carmel Police, and other law enforcement agencies in Hamilton County. Police do not believe Fishers is being specifically singled out because they say these sorts of thefts are happening throughout the region. Fishers police say they cannot control how retail stores handle their sales practices, but there are steps you can take right now to minimize the impact on yourself if your card is stolen. Experts recommend that you set up fraud alerts on your credit cards and require an ID when it is used. 
One man is dead, another man is injured after a double shooting on the city's northeast side. IMPD says emergency crews rushed to the 3800 block of North Emerson Avenue just before 11 this morning. Officers found two men suffering from gunshot wounds. Investigators tell us one man later died. Medics took the other man to a local hospital in critical condition. The identities of the victims or any possible suspects have not been released. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. New information tonight, we are learning a man who was shot Friday morning on the north side has since died. IMPD says officers rushed to the 3600 block of Hemlock Avenue around 6.30 Friday morning. That's near Fall Creek Parkway and 38th Street. Investigators say they found a man with a gunshot wound at a nearby get-go gas station. Medics took the man to a local hospital, but police say he later died. Officers haven't released any information about any potential suspects. Again, call crime stoppers with any information. And take a look at this. We did some digging tonight and so far in 2020, not even two months into the year, Indianapolis has had 30 homicides. That's 15 more than Indy had at the same time last year. And it also outpaces the number of homicides in Feb on February 15th in 2018 and 2017. And we are working for you to make sure you know what's happening in your neighborhood. We do have a map with all the homicides in Indianapolis in 2020. We show you where they've happened down to the street. To find this map, just go to our website, theindychannel.com or the RTV6 app. An Indiana State Police Trooper is okay tonight after a car crashed into the police vehicle on I-74 in Ripley County today. The people inside the second vehicle suffered non-life-threatening injuries. It is not clear what caused the car to slam into the cruiser, but it is an important reminder to move over when emergency vehicles are working on the side of the road. The cold weather is causing kennels at Indianapolis Animal Care Services to fill up. That is because animal control officers are getting more calls due to dogs being left outside in temperatures below 20 degrees. An ordinance in Indianapolis requires dogs to be brought inside or into a temperature controlled facility when temperatures reach below 20. While well, happening right now, a late night adopt-a-thon event just started at the shelter. The goal is to make it easier for all those people who work through the day to get to the shelter and adopt animals. If you can adopt, definitely come do that. That's our biggest way that we're able to clear up space. Um, if you aren't able to commit long term to an animal, you can always foster for us. So that gets an animal out of her temporarily. You learn a little more about them. Well, this is just the second time the shelter has held this type of event. The last time in November, they were able to get 101 animals adopted in just one day. It does only cost $5 for adoptions all throughout the month of February. The event runs from now until 10 p.m. Tonight, a building that has been vacant for nearly two decades is getting new life. Today marks the official opening of the 10 East Arts Hub. It's a community art space that will host programming for all ages. The art director says they have heard from people over and over again who live on the Near East Side that they want art programming in their neighborhood. We wanted to really create a vibrant, beautiful space where fe people felt welcomed, where um, they just wanted to be here and connect with community. Um, so this building has been vacant for um, about 20 years. And so the neighborhood residents are really excited to see some positive energy and a, a place where they can go and connect with one another. They were able to transform this space after receiving $4.3 million in grant, mom, grant money from Lilly Endowment. This is part of a bigger initiative in this community to get rid of vacant houses and buildings. We'll have much more on that coming up tonight at 11. It's Valentine's Day weekend. Romance is in the air, but beware. Scammers are targeting loving souls. What you need to know to protect yourself. RTV6's Sports' Brad Brown is in Chicago tonight for NBA All-Star festivities. The Pacers' DeMontis Sabonis is there as well. Brad breaks it all down. Still ahead, Kyle. And we are enjoying a dry weekend, but those rain chances are set to return. I'll have more on when you're going to need that umbrella again. You're watching RTV6 News at 6. For information, visit stewardspeakers.org. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. 
Valentine's Day is technically over, but many people will still celebrate throughout the weekend. And tonight, we're working for you, bringing you a warning about what's being called romance scams. The Federal Trade Commission says last year, people lost $201 million to scammers targeting those looking for love. Here's how the romance scam works. Scammers build a relationship with their victim and then ask that person for money to get out of some type of crisis. The FTC says more than 25,000 consumers filed a report on romance scams in 2019. Let's take a live look outside now on this Saturday evening from our IMS Pagoda camera. Sun is still out at this hour. Kyle, if you're heading out for dinner tonight, a little warmer than we all saw last night. Yeah, our temperatures are about 20 to even 30 degrees warmer than this time yesterday. We will certainly take the warm up. And as you look at the IU campus here, yeah, you still see a little bit of that sunshine. Our sun not setting now until 20 after 6. So it's nice to see those daylight hours are getting a little bit longer. Longer, and that's helping out warming these temperatures. We've got a 40 degree reading right now in Indy, Bloomington. You're sitting at 43. Again, it's been a little breezy today. That has helped boost those temperatures, but also kind of added to the wind chill. It's still out of the south around 10 to 15 miles per hour, but here's what it's making it feel like. So if you are heading out this evening, you are still going to need that winter coat. Just take it along because temperatures are going to start to get a little colder here. Right now it feels like 32 in Indy. Feels like the upper 20s in the Peru area. Tonight, temperatures a whole a lot more manageable instead of the single digits and teens will settle back into the middle 20s around Lafayette and Kokomo close to 30 degrees in Greenwood and 33 Bloomington into Columbus. Now we may have a little bit of patchy fog that develops here late overnight into tomorrow morning. So we see on Truecast that cloud cover potential for some of that fog. I think that will kind of limit our warming the first half of the day. As we go into the afternoon though, things will improve. We'll actually start to see a little more of that sunshine coming back into the forecast. And again, it's going to be a dry day as we go throughout our Sunday. So as we take it hour by hour for you, a light wind, not going to be nearly as breezy as what we had today, but look at those temperatures. We're still in the 30s for you at 11 a.m., 37, and then we'll get into the lower and middle 40s across the area as we see a little more of that sunshine coming our way. High temperatures though, we're talking about numbers area wide going to be above average for this time of year. 44 in Indy, close to 50 in Columbus at 48 and a little cooler in Muncie at 41 degrees. Now on Monday, we're going to have the clouds back in place. Temperatures will still make their way into the 40s, but you notice as we get especially into the evening, that's where we've got another chance for rain coming our way. This is true cast three o'clock Monday afternoon. Can't rule out an afternoon stray shower, but we see that more widespread rain here as we go into Monday evening and Monday night, and I think it is going to be primarily rain. We're going to be on the warmer side of this system for us and could see about a half inch of rainfall, actually something we don't really need across the area. Seven day planning forecast we will have a few of those showers lingering into Tuesday morning, 42 the high there, and then we get another shot of some cold air. Lows are back in the teens, both Thursday and Friday morning with highs in the 30s, but then we really start to warm things up next weekend, and beyond that, I think we're we're back to highs in the 50s. It was interesting yesterday how it started off so cold and then when it got up to what, like teens in the afternoon, I was like, yeah. oh, it feels a lot better, but still The sunshine teens. was the key yesterday. Yeah, it made a big difference. And today, a lot of that snow melting with temperatures in the 40s. All right, Kyle, All thank right. you. A widow says she got a Valentine's Day delivery from her husband who passed away back in December. But even in death, Randy Tenney was still able to make sure his wife got flowers on Valentine's Day. Last fall, Deborah Tenney found out her husband of 45 years had an aggressive form of brain cancer. Even with the grim diagnosis, Randy found a way to show Deb just how much he loved her. Randy made an arrangement with a family friend who was a florist before he passed away. With the flowers, Randy also left Deborah a message. It always started out with roses are red, violets are blue. Yelling from heaven that I will always love you. <clears throat> with love from your eternal Valentine, RT. And I guess you could call this my real life PS I love you miracle. What a sweet story. Well, Randy and Deborah got married in 1974, and that is what Valentine's Day is all about. I love it. Well, Hinkle rocking this afternoon. Butler going up against Big East rival Georgetown. It came down to the final minutes. We'll show you what happened. And next, we check in with Brad Brown, who is in Chicago for NBA All-Star Weekend, following DeMontis Sabonis.
Welcome back to the news at six. A tough day for two local college basketball teams. The Butler Bulldogs playing in front of a sellout crowd at Hinkle Fieldhouse couldn't keep pace with the George Georgetown Hoyas this afternoon. Georgetown defeated Butler 73 to 66. Kamar Baldwin scored 17 points, pulled down six rebounds, and dished out six assists. Jordan Tucker added 16 points, and Sean McDermott scored 12. Butler falls to 19 and seven seven overall and seven and six in the. Big Big East play. The Bulldogs play at Seton Hall on Wednesday. The Purdue Boilermakers up and down basketball season continues after winning their first three games of February, including a win over IU at Assembly. This afternoon, the Boilers dropped their second straight game. Purdue went on the road and lost to the Ohio State Buckeyes 68-52. to Evan Boudreaux led the way with 17 points for the Boilermakers, and it doesn't get any easier. Purdue heads to Madison to play Wisconsin on Tuesday. The NBA's Superstar Showcase is in Chicago this weekend. The All-Star Game will come to Indianapolis next February, but today the Windy City is Hoop Central, and that includes one current and one former member of the Pacers. Brad Brown is in Chicago with a look. For fans who don't have tickets to the big game on Sunday, they get a taste of the All-Star action here on Saturday at Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago as the NBA has opened the doors to media day and practice to thousands of fans. It's a ticketed event for the first time and big crowds have turned out for this one. Both teams got an opportunity for a media day session and then practice on the court behind me here. That included the first appearance, of course, for Pacers All-Star DeMontis Sabonis, getting a chance for Q&A from dozens of media gathered. It's like a dream, you know, being here with all these players. I was just in the locker room with all the guys and it's crazy, you know, all these greats in there, and uh, it's pretty cool, you know, it's just every year just trying to get better as a player, you know, um, the, the Pacers uh, trusted in me, you know, to come here um, and lead the team, you know, and uh, be a better player and just and, and just basically be, be myself. Of course, the biggest members of this session this morning came from the likes of LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook. We also got a chance to catch up with former Pacers and current Lakers head coach Frank Vogel, who will be in charge of Team LeBron this weekend. We got a chance to talk to Frank about what he's got with all this talent on the floor, but also the prospect of Indianapolis getting set to host the All-Star Game a year from now. My family's upset with me that I had the best record in the league this year because we were hoping that maybe next year we could do it and then we could all go stay at our house in Carmel and, uh, you know, get to come home, so to speak. But maybe we'll come home for it anyway and just be able to observe it as a fan. The festivities continue tonight over at the United Center, side of the main events for this weekend. It's the All-Star Slam Dunk Competition, the three-point contest, and the Skills Challenge as well. Sabonis so will be a part of that. We'll catch up with him coming up tonight on the news at 11. In Chicago, Brad Brown, RTV6 Sports. All right, thank you, Brad. In one year, Indianapolis will host the NBA All-Star Game, and you can help welcome visitors to the Circle City. The organizers of the, the All-Star Game announced the Nothing But Knit Project. You can knit or crochet navy, blue, and gold hats and beanies that will be worn by official volunteers and workers during the event. And being just one year out, more knitting experts are needed to help keep the heads of everyone coming into the Circle City warm. We still need help from the, the, the public and volunteers. There'll be other community things that people could be involved in. And, and we have the, the beanie program, um, and, and we, we want to make sure that we have about 4,000 now, and we need a couple thousand more at least. So uh, we'd like for all those knitters and those crocheters out there to keep, to keep turning them into us because we want to give them to all the volunteers and the people who come in, and that'll be a great representation as people go home, uh, you, you know, w whether they go home to other cities or, or back here. So we still need your help. And we appreciate uh, everybody, uh, everybody being a part of that. There was a similar project when Indianapolis hosted the Super Bowl. For more information, go to Pacers.com slash All-Star 2021. The NBA All-Star Game will be played at Bankers Life Fieldhouse on February 14th next year. Well, we are warmer today, but what can we expect for the rest of the weekend? Kyle's back next with a final check of your forecast. Stay with us. Ask your rheumatologist about Cosentix. 
Today's RTV6 photo of the day comes to us from Casey Earls. Casey sent us this beautiful snowscape shot near Sundance Apartments in the Southport area near I-65 and Southport Road. The snow is covering the trees and looks so gorgeous there next to the water. And a surprise, two photos of the day for the price of one. We wanted to also include Sarah Eisen's picture. She got this shot in Monticello, Indiana. Snow is definitely a pain to drive in, but if you take the time to look, you will find it brings a lot of beauty to this area. Send us your photos of the day. Email it to news at WRTV.com. If we choose your picture, we'll air it on the news at 6. Great photos. Yeah, and the snow was nice to look at for a couple of days, but now it's melting away. And we'll continue to do that big time here as we go Sunday and Monday with those highs in the 40s. And late in the day, Monday through Tuesday morning, that's our next chance for some rain moving our way. All right, Kyle, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you right back here tonight at 11. Have a great night.